This is the worst restaurant at Disney World, but will a new updated menu change things? Today we find out. Let's have lunch at Mama Melrose. Today we are back in Hollywood Studios because my least favorite restaurant on all of Disney property has a new menu and I am hearing that it's pretty good. Typically serving up a meal that is not even on par with my local Olive Garden, I am here today to see if things have changed. We have new pizzas, new pastas, new apps, desserts, essentially the entire menu has changed. As always, I will be giving you guys my 100% honest review, so let's head inside and check it out. We have made it into Mama's. Ryan, do you feel like we are in a cozy little mother's kitchen here? Um, yes, especially the fact that we are the closest table to the kitchen, which is fine, which is great. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we are back home in New Jersey with our Mama right, and we're just, we're having a good home-cooked Italian meal because we are both Italian, right? But Ryan was not kidding about being the closest table to the kitchen. I can literally hear the pans sizzling behind me. That's how close we are. I hear stuff sizzling, but that means everything's being cooked up fresh. While we're listening to these sizzling pans, let's take a look at the menu here. Bunch of new appetizers. There's the fried calamari. That one stayed. They have a new burrata salad. I love burrata. The mushroom artichoke cheese dip is also new. They have a Caesar salad, house garlic bread. That's new. They have tomato, bruschetta, marinated olives, minestrone soup, and fried mozzarella sticks. In the past, they also had fried mozzarella, but it wasn't in the form of sticks. They were more of like discs. And I remember we got them when I came and reviewed this restaurant the first time and I thought they were like super mid, um, but I wanna try them again. I, I hear they're good, so we'll give them another go. Let's take a look over the entrees as well. They have a fettuccine Alfredo with shrimp. You can substitute that for chicken if you'd like. Mama's Italian pasta with chicken. That actually sounds really delicious. Rigatoni bolognese, spaghetti and meatballs. They have a polenta cake with mushroom and herb cauliflower. That's the plant-based item. Asabuco, they have an oven-baked chicken parm. They have a mushroom and goat cheese pizza, a margarita pizza, prosciutto and honey pizza, a fresh fish, and then they also have their classic strip steak. Last time I was here, I was here with Promise, and me and her split the chicken parm and the steak. We also had a pizza as our appetizer too, and the pizzas are now moved onto the entree menu. I wanna try one of those for sure, and I'm trying to think of like a little menu hack that I could do because I really am interested in both of these pizzas. I love goat cheese, I love prosciutto, and I love honey on pizza. So I wanna see if I could maybe like combine all of those things. We'll see, I'm gonna ask the server. Um, but we also had the steak last time I was here, and it served with the mac and cheese. I really did not enjoy that at all. Didn't enjoy the chicken parm either. Like both of the entrees were not good. So I'm staying away from them this time and I'm gonna get something else. I'm eyeing this rigatoni bolognese. It sounds really good. I've heard it's really good. And of course, I've got to try some of this pizza. Well, Ryan, it is your first time dining at Mama Melrose. On a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? I, this better be a 10. Well, I'll have to say an 11 because I love Italian food so much. I'm the biggest fan of Olive Garden. I've been told this is Olive Garden quality. <laughs> no? In the intro, I said it's actually worse than Olive Garden. So with all the gleaming reviews that you've heard from me of this place, um, I'm sure you're, you're psyched. Well, let's get started right away with the food. The first thing to come to our table are the fried mozzarella sticks. Oh. These are served with a marinara sauce and lemon aioli for 15 bucks. That is most definitely coming right off the plate. I'll give that to Ryan. I'll Ooh. take it. I'll take it. I'll that take is, a shot. That is also a heaping <laughs> cup of aioli. That that thing is like full to the, that is that is just too much. But despite all of the aioli on my table, these mozzarella sticks look banging. I can't wait to try them out. The cheese is just like oozing out of them and they look freshly freshly battered and fried. I'm making Ryan film what is hopefully going to be a killer cheese pull. Sure looks like it and I know he always gets on me about these cheese pulls. He he hates when I do this, but we're doing it anyway, and it looks good. Let's go for a dunk in this marinara here. I'm not double dipping, I'm going the other side. The marinara is actually really good and I cannot believe I'm saying this. This is the first thing at this restaurant that I've ever actually given praise. The breading is super light. The breadcrumbs that they use, you can kind of tell there's like just a super light coating of the breadcrumbs. 
and the cheese is nice and cheesy. No complaints here. These are delicious. So Ryan is like the biggest mozzarella stick hater. The only mozzarella stick hater bigger than him is Nate because Nate doesn't like cheese. But Ryan does not like mozzarella sticks. We went to the Rainforest Cafe a month ago at this point. We got an appetizer sampler with some mozzarella sticks on it. He's like, I do not like these. Why am I eating these? Um, but he just tried one and he opened, he did the weirdest cheese pull ever. He like, you know how you usually like, it's like this way and you like I rip it, it that again. way. Let me do it again. I, no, we're not doing it again. He like did it the opposite way. You guys are going to have to go watch his video to see this ridiculous cheese curtain that he created. But I want to hear what he has to say about these mozzarella sticks. As somebody who has a lactose intolerance, I don't know why I did that. Um, ate, ate a mozzarella stick in the first place, but it was good. It very, very much reminded me of like the mozzarella sticks that they, that they had at my youth group growing up. And those are microwaved ones, but this is better. It's just the, the taste of them, I guess. But it's the breading is a lot better on the outside than they were for microwaved ones, obviously. And it's good. It's like it actually tastes really good. And I think it's a good go-to, but it's like 15 bucks, so that's a lot. Ryan brings up a really good point. Fifteen dollars for five mozzarella sticks is quite a bit. Three dollars per mod stick. I mean, I guess we're in a theme park. They're freshly like you could tell these are fresh. They are not like frozen mozzarella. I, I hope I'm right. I hope. I hope. Um, but they taste fresh, at least. Um, so, not the best of values, but they are really tasty, and I would actually get them again. In fact, I'm enjoying these mozzarella sticks so much that I'm going to have a third. I didn't even film my second because I filmed it for TikTok, and these have been on the table for quite a while, and we're still getting some cheese pulls with them. After enjoying our appetizer, the entrees have arrived at the table. And of course, in true right down Main Street fashion, we've got three entrees for two people. Let's start by trying the prosciutto and honey pizza. This has Parmesan, ham, and red chili flakes for $22. Now I did successfully pull off a little menu hack on this pizza here. So they also have a mushroom and goat cheese pizza on the menu that sounded really delicious as well. Um, and I asked if I was able to add goat cheese onto the prosciutto and honey pizza. They checked with the chefs, they were able to do it. Um, so this is kind of like the best of both worlds. We'll, we'll see. I'll let you guys know if you guys should try this hack too. But right off the bat by looking at this pizza, this doesn't look um, like I thought it would. Um, from my observation, this has more ham, like regular deli ham, than actual prosciutto on this pizza. And it's all like broken up. There are maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little tiny chunks of prosciutto on this pizza. The rest is just cheese and like ten chunks of deli ham. Um, hopefully the taste makes up for there not being much prosciutto. I strategically got the piece with the most prosciutto and it's very floppy. A lot of flop on that. The, the crust is nice and crusty and like cracker thin. The rest is, oh, goat cheese just flopped off into my pasta. Adding that goat cheese is the way to go. I already know after the first bite, the honey mixed with the goat cheese and the saltiness of the prosciutto and ham is delicious. I wish it was cooked just a tad bit longer so it wasn't floppy there. Let's get a bite of the crust though. The flavor of this pizza is honestly phenomenal. The honey on there, I love like, whenever I get a pizza or make a pizza at home, I love putting like ricotta cheese and hot honey. I always put hot honey on my pizza. And that creaminess from the goat cheese kind of like takes the place of the ricotta. When you add that honey on there, it's really good. I wish it was hot honey that they added on there because hot honey is my shit. Um, there could be more prosciutto. Not sure how good the value is because there is so little prosciutto, but this is a very tasty pizza. And I'm gonna say it right now, this pizza is better than Via Napoli. Earlier off camera, Kristen mentioned that the reason she wanted to put goat cheese on this pizza was so because she didn't want to spend $50 on a pizza. And if you're at Via Napoli, that's what you would be spending on a pizza. So like, I mean, this is a really good combo and it's a good hack and definitely try to make it work. Yeah, I did say, I was like, I really want to try both pizzas, but I don't want to spend 
literally, it would have been almost $50 if I had gotten two pizzas. Um, so I'm really glad that they let me do it. So shout out to the chefs at Mama Melrose. You knocked it out of the park with this one. It's very tasty. Before I dig into my pasta, which I must admit does not look the best, I'm going to ask what Ryan thinks of his pasta. Ryan got Mama's Italian pasta with chicken. This is bucatini pasta, kale, and roasted garlic with cherry tomatoes and parmesan for 30 bucks. This dish is absolutely wonderful, and I love it so, so much. Not as much as the recent similar dish I got at Rainforest Cafe. If you recall from our Rainforest Cafe vlog we did together here on Kristen's channel, I got a Rasta pasta from there for only $24. This is $30, and the Rainforest Cafe pasta was better. I still like this a lot. Uh, I will say, while Ryan's pasta does look good, the portion is like also very small for $30. It looks to be like there's barely chick any chicken in there. The veggies are sparse. Um, it looks good. I might have to steal a noodle, but very overpriced. One noodle, everyone knows the rules. It's good. I make a very similar sauce at home. It's literally just like a white wine garlic butter sauce. Not anything special. And for 30 bucks, eh, but it's good. But now let's dig into my pasta, which is looking extra old and decrepit. This is the rigatoni bolognese, has ground beef, Italian sausage, and Parmesan for $26. As soon as this was placed on my table, I was thinking, oh, this does not look good. I did not order right. Um, but we'll see if maybe this, maybe it just doesn't look good and the taste is good. I hope that's the case. Let's get a little noodle here. No. They definitely broke out the box of Ronzoni pasta for this one. But the pasta is not even the issue because the pasta is actually cooked well. I do not like the flavor of this sauce, and there's not a lot of meat in it. I don't know what it is about the flavor of the sauce as a whole, but I am just not a fan. The pasta is very dry. I, I feel like they should have like tossed this with some pasta water in the sauce to make it kind of like less dry. I mean, like this looks like it was sitting under the warmer on the counter back there for quite a while. And the sauce, I don't know what it is. The sauce, I should just trust my gut and know that like a meat sauce out at a Disney restaurant that's not, probably not the like most like signature restaurant isn't gonna be the best. And um, I think I just ordered wrong, because this is not good. Other than tossing the pasta with some pasta water and the sauce, I think another thing that would have made this a lot better is some added like whipped ricotta on top. Over at Maria and Enzo's in Disney Springs, they have a similar dish uh, like rigatoni bolognese, but they add some of their delicious homemade whipped ricotta on top. And that just makes a pasta for me. Like anytime I make pasta like this at home, always got to add some ricotta on there and something like that or even goat cheese they have goat cheese in the restaurant would be really good on this and kind of make up for the flavor of the sauce that i'm not the biggest fan of out of everything that i've tried so far today i do have to say i would get the mozzarella sticks again and i would also get the pizza again the rigatoni i'd probably stay away from and i'd choose something else if i wanted a pasta um but pizza and the mod sticks were pretty good we still have one more course left to try to give it the true test and beyond to dessert. Looking over the menu for desserts, they have a mini cannoli trio. I got that last time, wasn't a fan. The tiramisu wasn't impressive either. They have this pastiocti cream tart. They also have a flourless chocolate cake, goat cheese mousse tart, gelato, and a cherry chocolate cake. Everyone that I've been seeing coming here and trying the new menu has gotten the goat cheese tart. And it looks really good and the reviews on it are all really good, but I wanted to try something else that I haven't seen anyone else try yet. So I decided to go with the Pastiocti cream tart. I'm 100% sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. This is a house-made tart with pastry cream and frangipane dusted with powdered sugar served with an Amarena cherry compote for $10. Now, honestly, this looks really good. From the looks of it, I'm very happy with my decision to choose this tart instead of the goat cheese tart. I guess 
I didn't really fully know what to expect with it, but this is, I guess, kind of what I expected. It looks to be like a buttery kind of almondy flavor tart. I don't know. We'll break it open and see what's inside. I don't know what to expect from the inside. All right, let's let's get into this bad boy here. It is refrigerated, so it's quite hard. Okay. You want to break that open? Here, like, turn it around. I'm trying to turn it around there. It looks really good. It smells really good too. It has a very nice almond scent. Let's let's just dig right into this. A little bit of that berry sauce. Mm. If you're looking for a dessert that's not too sweet and is like a buttery shortbread cake, hints of almond flavor, then this is for you. This is delicious. I, I love this a lot because I don't like sweets too much. Um, and I say this every time, but I know I always eat them in videos, but if I wasn't filming a video, I would never eat a dessert. Um, but this is one I would get because it's just not that sweet. I wish I had more of that berry sauce. It should be like drizzled all over in it, but this is really good. Honestly, this might be the best thing I ate all day. I definitely wasn't planning on eating a whole entire dessert today but it might happen with this. It's giving me everything I wanted, honestly. It has almost like that almond flavor that a biscotti has. Also, some of the flavor that like a Italian rainbow cookie has. This is the best dessert that I've had at a sit down restaurant at Disney World in a very, very long time. If you like plain unsweet desserts, this one is for you. Best thing I ate all day for sure. Well, we are done with our lunch over at Mama Melrose and I do have to say, total improvement to the menu. I think a lot of the stuff that I had today was far, far better than when I came and filmed a video the last time. Is it still the worst restaurant at Disney World? I think it's a little too soon to tell. I feel like I have to go back one more time to give it like a fair total analysis. One more time with the new menu, I gotta try it again. Um, try a couple more things. But if we are just basing it off of the meal that I ate today, it is no longer the worst restaurant at Disney World. Spice Road Table, watch out because you're next in line to take over that title. Uh, Mama Melrose is moving up in the world. For the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed everything that I had today except for the bolognese. I would get the pizza, the mod sticks, and that dessert all over again for sure. We're gonna hang out in Hollywood Studios and enjoy the rest of our day. Brand new scenes in the Star Tours attraction just dropped today. So Ryan's gonna go ride a couple of times. I cannot ride Star Tours, it makes me so sick. And if you watch my Disneyland video, I did say that that was my final time riding it over in Disneyland. I was never gonna ride it again and I'm sticking true to it. So I'm gonna hang out out here while Ryan uh, goes to ride. I think he's gonna ride a couple times. So if you guys wanna see any updates from the new Star Wars, uh, Star Tours scenes, Head to Ryan's channel, the link's gonna be in the description. Huge shout out to my Patreon subscribers, Angela, Ashley, Barbara, the Calcanes family, Catherine, Lindsay, Misty, Shelby, Adam and Jen, and Brittany, Karis, Chelsea, Carol, Danielle, Marcel, Dante, Dustin and Nancy, Emily, Ethan, John Paul, Christina, Leah, Tori, Lisa, the Martell family, Michael Pickle, the Latham Thomas family, Tracy, Wayne, Jermaine, Eric, the Weaver family, Steven, Andrea, Jessica, the Leibowitz family, Abigail and Robin, Jamie and Andrew and Diane. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm very happy to say that Mama Melrose has improved. It's still not a restaurant that I like run to or rush out of my way for um but it is definitely a new and improved spot and i'm very happy about that so i'll see you guys next time bye